Jesus, I'm unclean and I need some help. And everybody would look at her and say, well, if you're unclean, what are you doing here? We're all squashed together. So she can't really announce her problem. And she thinks, the only thing I can do, I have faith that if I could just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Now, what does clothing represent in the Bible? I heard someone say righteousness. I didn't say Jesus' clothing. I said clothing. What is our clothing? Our clothing is filthy rags. Clothing represents character. What would the clothing or the robe of Christ represent? Righteousness. She reaches out and she touches his clothing and she's healed. How do we who are unrighteous, we are unclean, how do we obtain cleansing? It is through a touch, but not just touching. She believed if she touched. So was it the touch or was it the faith? More important than the touch was the faith because there was another Gentile who said, Lord, I believe you don't even need to, I don't even need to see you. I don't need to touch you. I think it's your word. Jesus said, because you believe, oh, I've not seen faith like this even in Israel. This woman was an Israelite. She needed to at least touch him. The Gentile said, you don't even need to come. Just speak the word. So the faith is even more important than the touch. Now, is it still true today that if we, by faith, reach out, that we today can lay hold on Christ's robe and find cleansing? Those of us who are unclean today, that we're separated today, we're isolated today by our sin, we can pray, we can reach out to Jesus and touch him and be healed? Can that happen right now while I'm teaching the lesson? Or do you have to wait for some parade? Yeah, we can, through our prayers, reach out. Is he passing by right now where we can reach his garment and get cleansing? It's true, friends. Well, I gave you a little more than you paid for on that one. So, but uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and move on to Martha. Um, Luke chapter 10, verse uh, 38 to 42. Now it happened as they went, he entered a certain village. This is all one concise verse. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed, her into, um, welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Jesus doesn't condemn Martha for the things she's doing. What he says to Martha is really an issue of priority. Uh, sometimes we become so busy with, you've heard this cliche before, doing the work of the Lord, we forget the Lord of the work. Martha was always preoccupied with doing the work of the Lord. Busy, 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 doing good things, but the personal relationship was being eclipsed by the duties. Now once again, what does a woman represent? What kind of church does the Lord want? The, the church that's busy? Lord, Lord, we taught in your streets, we cast out devils, we did many wonderful works and cooked and cooked lots of potlucks. We sowed and, and mended at the Dorcas. And Jesus will say, I don't know you. And then there'll be those who have the relationship with Jesus. Those are the ones who sit at his feet and uh, look wistfully into his eyes because they love him. They've got this relationship. They hear his word. They take it personally. And so you get two kinds of churches. You get some churches that are very busy. They get community service. And those things are good. He doesn't condemn them for doing the teaching and the preaching and the ministry. Every church should do that. But not at the expense of the personal relationship. We are not saved by the works of Martha. We're saved by the relationship of Mary. And I think that's probably the most important thing to remember. Stay tuned. Pastor Doug will be right back with this week's special free offer. Now, did Jesus come to earth so he'd know how humans feel? Or did he already know? What is the criteria that is being used in this judgment? Is it the sinners go into eternal judgment 
and the righteous into eternal life? Or is it those who have neglected to love their fellow man? Hello, friends. I'm supposing that you know that Amazing Facts is 100% viewer supported. If you have appreciated these programs, if it's been a source of encouragement for you, and if it's blessed your life, we'd love to hear from you. The only way we can stay on this network and these stations is because viewers just like you contact us and let us know. Why don't you drop us a line or even go to the website, amazingfacts.org, and send us a note of encouragement and support so we can stay on the air. Is it possible to see into the future? What's in store for planet Earth? Crime, war, and natural disasters appear to intensify every day. Do they herald an approaching cataclysmic event? Discover secrets in the Bible that will change your life forever. Call now and order your copy of the most amazing Bible prophecies today. If you've been encouraged by today's message and would like to know more of what God's Word says to you today, Amazing Facts invites you to visit our educational website at www.bibleuniverse.com. At Bible Universe, you'll discover exciting truths that will fill you with peace and purpose. The mysteries of the Bible will unfold for you at your own pace. Visit www.bibleuniverse.com today. Expand your universe. If you've missed any of our Amazing Facts programs, visit our website at AmazingFacts.org. There you'll find an archive of all our television and radio programs, including Amazing Facts Presents. One location, so many possibilities. AmazingFacts.org. Hi, friends. There has been much debate within our society on gender roles within the Christian faith. This discussion is usually focused on whether women should serve as pastors, priests, or elders, and if so, should they be ordained? I believe a great central truth has been lost within the whole discussion. The Bible has many wonderful principles that give us tremendous insight when dealing with this issue. That's why we want to offer you a pocketbook that we believe will shed light on the subject. It's called God's Role for Women in Ministry. Please call our toll-free number and ask for offer number 769. Or if you prefer, you can visit our website at amazingfacts.org. You can even write us at Amazing Facts, offer number 769, P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Well, our time is up for this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Until we meet again, friends, remember, Jesus is the truth that will set you free. This is your last chance to take advantage of this week's special free offer. There is no cost or obligation. Just call the toll-free number on your screen and be sure to note the offer number when you make your request. The preceding was a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated.